The Cabrillo National Monument is named after the 16th century explorer Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo. The park has acres of wild habitat and several great hiking trails to enjoy. The park is well known for its old lighthouse that used to aid mariners in navigating these waters. The lighthouse is no longer in use, but it's a great place for visitors to see how life was like back in the day. The park also has some great tide pools that are easy to get to and has lots of marine life for visitors to see. The tide pools are located at the base of the cliffs on the western side of the park. Take the access road just after entering the park and follow it down to the parking area. There are two parking areas, so try to park in the first one as it has better access to the tide pools. Note that the parking can be very challenging on weekends with low tides during the day. Take a short walk along the cliff to access the tide pool area. There is a short scramble down a, a relatively slippery hillside, so be careful when navigating this area. The tide pools to the north of this area are pretty flat, but they're covered with really slippery algae. Walk slowly to avoid slipping, and you can see a lots of anemones, a whole bunch of black tegula snails, and of course, lots of hermit crabs. On the exposed rocky areas, there's a good chance you're gonna see a few barnacles and some limbits. The broader bay to the left is only accessible at a very low tide. The more adventurous tide pool visitors can wade across this area and access the huge tide pool area to the south. This happens to be my favorite location. There are some large rocks and flatter bench areas that are relatively easy to walk on and see some animals. The larger rocks are covered with these giant owl limpets that are pretty fun to see. Look for open areas on the rocks and you can see that the owl limpets will graze certain patches of the area. These owl limpets will actively farm these open areas on these rocks and they can stay in these same locations for several years. This area has lots of aggregating and solitary sea anemones that cover the flat and less exposed areas. Keep walking through this area and look at the size of the large rocks. There are several good clumps of gooseneck barnacles and of course, a lot more owl limpets. Continue past this area with the large boulder fields to the larger flat area behind it. Take a slow walk along this area and you have a good chance to see a few sea hares, some uh, really good seagrass beds and more anemones and maybe a few giant keyhole limpets if you're lucky. This area is also known to have a few occupants around, so keep an eye out for the occasional leg visible near a submerged rock. My last visit here, I saw an octopus that had captured a small egret and was slowly pulling it under the water. The most common types of animals here are sea anemones, barnacles, snails, hermit crabs, and lots of different types of algae. There are also occasional sea hares, giant keyhole limpets. Do not expect to see many sea stars, sea urchins, mussels, and clams. A disease back in the 1990s came through this area and all but wiped out the mussels and they haven't yet recovered. This location was featured on the documentary TV series about life in the tide pools and can be viewed at the website lifeinatidepools.com. Additional information about the Cabrillo National Monument and the tide pools is available at californiatidepools.com. Check out our channel for more videos about California tide pools.